Hello everybody, this is Minecraft here, and welcome to another episode of Minecraft Vanilla Super Flat Survival. And now I actually don't even know what episode number this is anyway, so... Now, I don't know, I think the slimes are a bit too loud. Oh, hostile creatures is still at 5%. Well, anyway, like I promised in the previous episode, I did do quite a bit of off-camera work. And one of the things that I did, I don't remember if I showed you this or not. I don't think I did show you this last time. But what I basically did is I really did not like um, when I was coming back home from uh, that village over there. I was really kind of uh, mad at the fact that I was not able to go through this. Well, I wasn't mad, but I was concerned because I noticed that this rapid transit system of... Um, this canal rapid transit system of boats was actually quite inefficient in that it kind of blocked the space if I was riding a horse from this direction and wanted to go to that direction and wanted to go from here over there then I could not do that because there was a natural well it was not a natural barrier but uh, this canal system also acts as a barrier because it's gonna be difficult to get from one side to the other side so what I decided to do is I decided to build a very, very aesthetically pleasing bridge over it. And this is a very nice overpass that I have built. Uh, right here is this thing just in case if I... This uh, lever thing right here, or lever or whatever you want to call it, is just in case if I'm running out from the monsters or from... Uh, if I'm here at nighttime, especially, this can be used as kind of a safe haven outside my normal base area. So... And also, as you can see, it stops slimes as well, so, um, uh, basically, if I don't have time to open this gate with hand, I just have these little, uh, levers right here just to make sure that I get in. Now, I have these stairs that go up, uh, right here, and below I have some space there. Now, I have two high walls right here and the reason for that is to make sure that no mobs get inside my base and by that I mean that if you think about it say for example I open this gate right here and then forget to close it and then um, a zombie or a creeper or a skeleton gets in here and sees me working like around that area then the skeleton might be able to jump down right there and then the skeleton might be able to get inside my base area so this not only protects against f me from falling down um, this this um, this gate also this fence area also protects me from accidentally falling off for example, if I'm riding a horse and I accidentally jump up one level to make sure that I don't accidentally uh, fall down into the canal system. And when I was building this f first, um, I was thinking how to make it so that it would be... Uh, so that it would, I would have a covering right here as well as right there. Oh, actually, I don't know why, but for some reason... I have a high, I don't have a high wall right there, but on the other hand, I have a tall wall right there. And I really worked hard to make this whole build symmetric, just so it would be aesthetically pleasing, but unfortunately, I, it seems that I have to add more cobblestone walls on this side over here, just to make sure so it looks kind of similar. And actually, while I was building this, I noticed that this, um area really overlaps with this uh, access point north right here I have access point north and so what I decided to do is I decided to connect to here because um, one time I was going on this bridge and overpass during the nighttime and I'm thinking well what if I actually need to get home from this bridge what if I can use this as an entrance back to my base so then what I did is I connected it towards right here added some stairs right here um, this, there was a wall here, so I added a block right here, I added some stairs here, now, I also added some other blocks right here, I expanded it, and the reason I made this is, um, because I found out that, um, sometimes slimes, as you can see right here, slimes are able to climb up the ladder right here, and I got worried that slimes might be able to get up here, and I really don't want this area to have slimes, so I decided to cover every single um, ladder that I have with, um, 
trapdoors. And I have I also kind of created another area here. I branched off one more because I did not want to have a ladder go up right here. And also the reason why I have a trapdoor right here is so that if a skeleton or zombie happens to be up here that I make sure that they are not able to go down here. So this is kind of a second level of protection against that. So um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. And I also made sure to place all of the torches symmetrically. As you can see from here, um, I have torches every other two blocks right here and uh, every other two blocks up there as well. Uh, and now to show you the direct reason why I built this is I'm going to show you how I can use this to go about horses. Now let me get on my fastest horse right here. Oh, there's a slime there. Nope. And this is why I don't like using, uh, this is why I don't like using horses because slimes could pile up right here. Well, anyway, okay, so let me... Now close this all. I've been thinking about making a redstone integrated system that would open all of the gates at once and then close them once more. But anyway, like I said before, the reason why I have this bridge mostly is because so that I can... Um, is so I can run around like so on my horse. So I remember in the last episode I was actually running back home from that village over there and then I have to get my horse back to my horse um, Horse holding area right there, but unfortunately I found out that it's difficult because I have my canal system right here I mean, of course, I can go through this like so, but I don't re I do not really like that. I wanted a more integrated system, so I came up with this way how I can build a bridge over this so I can just ride my horse over it. And notice how right here I don't have pressure plates, but right here I do have pressure plates. And the reason for that is because, so just in case, when, um, in case some mobs are able to get through here, because if a mob comes on the pressure plate, the mob could possibly get inside this fenced area, but I really want this fenced area to be more of a safe haven, so... And by safe haven, I mean that I want this area to be mob-free, just like my base, so I make sure to seal all the entrances off to make sure that the mobs aren't able to get in here. Uh, now, if I'm riding a horse, I could just jump over this thing, and I tested this with slow horses as well. Um... And by slow horses, I mean I have another horse that is very, very slow, and I tested it with that horse, and that horse can also jump over these fence uh, gates as well. Uh, but I put these fence gates up just to make sure that if I eventually have to, if I'm around here during the night time by foot, I would make sure that it's easy to open this gate area right here. So, uh, yeah, that's what it's for. I mean, of course, I could jump over three high walls with this one right here but um if i'm using a slower horse like this one right here this bridge uh, overpass would be very very useful so yeah that's what i've been doing off camera but in addition to that i've been doing actually some other things is that i have started um building my villager breeder and in this episode i will get our first villager inside the villager breeder um now the villager breeder actually requires us to have three villagers so i'm gonna have to get three villagers now i'm gonna sleep real quick because i want to go over to my villager breeder and to do that um it must be daytime because i don't want the villagers to get killed and by that i mean that if um okay we looks like we have all the needed materials uh, and i'm gonna go grab my boat uh well or any boat from right there and then get my rapid transit system right here I really like how the bridge looks like. I really do like how it looks like. It looks really modern and aesthetically pleasing how it is possible to get through this thing on horseback without having to jump or anything, which is really nice. Now, you can probably already see that I have already started building the grinder. And actually, one thing that I forgot to bring with me is I forgot to bring glass with me. I had that 35 glass that I had. Uh, but I don't think I'm actually going to need glass right now because most likely I'm going to get some villagers to... I'm most likely going to pipe villagers from this area over there, from that village over there, 
to up here, and what's gonna happen is the villagers are gonna go like this, like this, and then when they get inside the water block, they're gonna start going up, and then they're gonna go up like that, and then they're gonna go up like that, like that, so they're gonna start jumping up like that. Now I'm also gonna make sure to put some blocks here, and then the water stream is just gonna put them right here, and then I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, close off this area here, and then the villager is just gonna be stuck in here, which is exactly what we need. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like that due to my ignorance, I forgot to bring our bucket with me, so that really sucks. So below here is gonna be the villager, this is gonna be the breeder villager, and... Um, no, actually, this is not gonna be the breeder villager. This villager is gonna be the villager that's gonna stand right here. It's gonna look at the doors right here, and this villager is going to tell the other villagers that there is a village here. And this villager is gonna tell the other villagers that, oh, we need more villagers. Time to breed. It's basically gonna tell the villagers to breed, so right here is gonna be our breeder villagers. There's gonna be two villagers here. I'm also gonna have to pipe up two villagers here. Make sure to close them up right here to make sure that they're not gonna escape. Now, I'm gonna have glass all over this area just so I can observe the breeding process. Um, there's gonna be soul sand on this block right here and on this block right here. Um, this is where the children villagers are gonna go on both sides right here. Now, there's gonna be water piping them up and as soon as they grow up, they're gonna start going up right here. And then there's going to be more villager children st standing right here. And when they grow up, they're going to start going up there. And then I'm going to have, um, and then I'm going to have the water uh, pipe them somewhere out in that direction right there. And then this is going to pipe, there's going to be another villager transport um, station thing that kind of goes down. It transports them downwards uh, and then it's gonna turn somewhere right there and then there's gonna be another villager transportation pipeline system towards my base because I need villagers in my base for trading and for iron farming that's where I'm gonna have my iron farm inside my base so I need to build another type of um, the same type of villager canal transport system alongside my um, my own um, boat canal system now I, I was thinking about using this system to transport the villagers but then it would be very easy for them to jump out so it would be much more efficient to simply build another villager transport system that's going to be only for the villagers specifically for the villagers um, now as you can see I'm gonna have the reason that I built this canal out of dirt is because dirt is very fast to break and I'm gonna build my temporary canal systems using dirt because as soon as I get the village in here, I'm gonna deconstruct this whole thing. And then after that, I'm gonna build another canal system that's gonna pipe them up all the way over there for the breeder villagers. And I'm gonna build that out of dirt as well um, so that. Um, I'm gonna build that out of dirt as well so that um, this is a temporary system too because as soon as I get two villagers standing in this position right here I won't have to pipe up more villagers right here so I'm gonna deconstruct that pipeline system as well uh, now when the villagers actually do grow up they're gonna go up right here and I'm gonna have another pipeline system that brings them down right here and it brings them down right there and then it sets them along the way to go all the way to, to back to my base and that pipeline system is most likely going to bu be built something out like of cobblestone or a more solid block um, and the reason for that is because that is going to be a um, permanent pipeline so I'm always going to have to bring some villagers to my iron farm so this is gonna be here all the time, and it's also gonna branch off. It is possibly gonna branch off. This is where some redstone might come in. I might flip a lever, and the villagers might go to a villager trading center that I'm gonna build somewhere around here. And then when I flip the lever again, it's gonna start piping them towards my base. So, from right here, the villagers are either gonna be piped into my, um, trading center, trading base, or into my iron farm. So that's going to be a permanent pipeline. Um, and it's going to take quite a bit of dirt and blocks and um, quite a long time of planning and 
failing and more planning and more failing until I finally get two villagers in there. It's definitely no easy task. Uh, now, I actually think that I'm going to go and I'm going to go towards the village right now and possibly I'm going to grab some... I think that I might... Oh, yes. I think that there is enough daytime for me to get some villagers down into that pipeline right there. I'm just going to get one villager right now. Now, this is the first test that will be done on this villager pipeline. I have never, ever transported villagers like this before in Minecraft. And I have never used this particular pipeline to pipe any villagers. So, let's cross our fingers that this is going to work. Let's hope that there are still villagers here because if this village died out then we'll be in deep trouble uh that's gonna suck very much okay what is this wow that was weird took a long time to load okay now looks like we do still have some villagers um hmm let's see Okay, now let's just kill the slime right here, just to make sure that they don't um, interfere with our villager piping process, in which they will most likely interfere with that. Okay, now let's push him that way. I actually did not really expect us to be doing this. Now I'm thinking maybe I'm going to build a personalized transportation system for each of the villagers, so possibly I might use a lead for them. I don't know, I might use a lead to transport them, and by that I mean that I might uh, grab a lead that I use to grab horses with and then pull them along that way. No, I think I'm gonna cut filming right now because I don't really see how this is working out too well. Um, the sun is on its way to set, so unfortunately I was not able to get any villagers in my transport canal system. I mean, it's good. If they did not walk around, then it'd be nice. But since they do work around, um, I actually think that what I might do is I might uh, kind of dig a ditch for each individual villager so that I could get them somewhere in there. And by that, I mean I'm going to dig... I'm going to dig this type of ditch for each villager. Okay, let's hope that I don't hit him too much. And I'm just going to dig a series of ditches somewhere around the village so that I'm able to... And we see that he's trying to jump up, but he's not able to. Let's hope that it's not going to be nighttime too soon. Okay, looks like I started digging the ditch in the correct location. And then we can just use regular water to pipe him along. Um, we can either just push him that direction... Or we can use some water to pipe him along. Now, it looks like I did not bring any... Uh, darn, I did not bring a bucket with me, so that's really great. Okay, now I have to... Uh, destroy that block right there. Um, and I think I'm going to head home now. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, grab the bucket back from my base. And then after I do that, I'm going to... I'm gonna sleep since it's already close to being nighttime and now I wouldn't say it's close to being nighttime but the sun is setting and by the time that we get back to our base by the time that I get back to my base then the sun will most likely completely set so that I'm gonna be able to sleep and then after I do that uh, I'm going to sleep and come back here and uh, return filming and I really want to film me piping the first villager to the villager breeder right here because I don't really know if it's going to work and it's really an epic moment for me because it's kind of like fingers crossed. I worked very hard for this. If this system does fail, I'm going to have to do something very radical. I don't have much choice if this fails. Now, most likely, hopefully, it will work, but uh, no guarantees. It might fail. I don't know, so... Uh, See you as soon as I uh, go home, grab some buckets. Well, grab my bucket, since I only have one bucket. Uh, so I'm just going to go home, grab my bucket, sleep, and then come back there. And yeah, the sun has already set by the time that we're back to our base.
Hello everybody and welcome back. I have now slept and arrived back at the village and I have also grabbed a water bucket like I said that I would. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe the villager somewhere that way to make sure that he gets where I need him to go. Um, now this is no easy task as we can see. Oh, I think the vill I think the water just kind of glitched out. Um, because, uh... I clearly only had one source, but anyway, okay, let's... Okay, are you kidding me? Why did the water just glitch out? I just had a water bucket and I placed it. Well, no biggie. I could just grab some from the villagers themselves. Okay, now let's really hope that we're going to be able to get him where we have to get him. Um, let's just push him along. Make sure that he doesn't go where we don't want him to go. Um, now, um... This is much harder than I was expecting it to be. Um, okay, now he's just glitching. Are you kidding me? Okay, now let's see. So I see we have to place... Uh, nope, 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 nope. nope. Oh, darn. I forgot about the freaking slimes. Okay, can they hurt us like that? Okay, no, looks like they cannot hurt us like that. Hmm. Okay. Now... I'm thinking what we can do to aid the situation. There's tons of slimes here. We can't do anything. We... Oh, well, what I can do is I can go a bit... Um, I think the thing that I can do right now is I can... Um, kind of go a block deeper... And by that, I mean we can just dig one more block like so. And then we can pour the water from there. Uh, okay. That's actually not such a bad idea, because that way we could push the villager that way too, so. So let's hope that the water is able to push him in this direction right here. Uh, eventually he'll just get in that direction. Now, I don't know how... It's about... It's not even daytime, so hopefully we can get him. Uh, sometimes we'll maybe have to push him along a bit, like, especially in this stretch right here, so... We'll just wait for that. And, oh my god, villagers in Minecraft, they are so difficult to deal with. Don't get me even started with villagers. Like, why can't you freaking, like, get where I need you to go? Okay, now let's push them right here. Oh, he actually got here. Okay, now let's push him all the way back where we need him to go. Uh, okay, now so far this system is working. Now, I knew that this wouldn't be exactly a fast system of transporting villagers, but... Uh, I mean, works, and this will probably take a long time, but... It's actually amazingly working. I'm actually not pressing anything right now. Let's hope that we can do that right now. So I'm kind of pushing him to make sure because sometimes if the villagers start running around, he can sometimes run um, that way and we don't ha need him to run that way. Oh, and even that system worked. I was worried how that probably won't work. Uh, now it looks like he's moving where we need him to move and looks like he's not really running around anywhere, which is good because we're probably far off from the village now. Now he does not detect any villages. Um, actually, this is working much better than I expected it to. When I first got the villager down into that hole and I almost got killed by those slimes, I was actually very, very worried that I'm gonna, going to have to construct a whole different villager transport system, but this doesn't seem to be failing too badly. And uh, although rudimentary, it does get the job done in transporting the villagers. But oh my god, are the villagers totally horribly picky. It's almost impossible to transport them. Thankfully, I have... Okay, where is he now? Okay, now this is a problem. Looks like he is kind of going off course. Now let's hope that the water does not 
make him able to go down. Uh, okay. Let's hope the water continues to push him in the correct direction. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna basically grab that. And push him in from that side. Okay, looks like he doesn't really want to move at the point. Now we are going to have to get this done before night falls, and looks like we're not too far away right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to... Go like that. Break that, and then fill this in, because I accidentally got in front of the villager. Now I make sure that I... One thing that I will try not to do is I can't get in front of the villager because that way I won't be able to push him. Um, since this is only a one block wide um, villager transport system, I'm not able to get behind the villager, so I have to kind of break some blocks there. Uh, now it looks like it's becoming nighttime, which is very... I'm very thankful that we're almost here. Now it looks like I can already see the villager breeder quite close. Now we just have to make sure that no zombies get in here, because if a zombie is able to get in here, then it's gonna be game over, and that means we're gonna lose a villager, so... Let's cross our fingers and uh, hope that everything is going to be alright, because... Believe me, as soon as zombies start spawning, they're just gonna go crazy over this villager. And we will also try to protect the villager from zombies spawning inside the breeder itself to make sure that um, when the villager is transported where he needs to be transported, that um, zombies aren't able to get in. So yeah, hopefully that's gonna get done. Okay, we're so close, but it's already night time, oh my god. Okay, okay, no, just steady, steady. And we're gonna have to do this two more freaking times. Oh, we're safe. We're almost safe. Okay. Okay, at least the slimes aren't in the way. That's a given. Okay, now the villager is encased in here and is quite safe since there is no zombies spawning around here since this is already encased inside. Uh, now I'm gonna kill off some of these little slimes because they're very annoying. Um, now, oh. Oh. Okay, okay. 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 Oh my god. That was very, very difficult. But I was actually able to get the villager in. Okay, now. Wow. That's amazing. That was so difficult. But I actually managed to get a villager in this location. All the tireless amount of work, all of the, um, all of the minutes that took me to try and to try to make this villager transport system have all paid off because I finally got a villager inside this area. Now I'm gonna deconstruct this whole um, construction and then hopefully get my boat. And then I should probably leave this area as soon as I can to make sure that that village over there is unloaded. Uh, now let's hope that nothing happens to the villager because that's gonna suck very much, but... I'm gonna do a bunch of more elf camera work. I'm gonna, um... I'm gonna bring in more villagers here. I'm gonna pipe some more villagers in. I might show you how I pipe them in in the next episode, but I am gonna do quite a bit of elf camera work, so... Thank you very much for watching. This is my Kralux. Um, I'm fairly certain that our villager transport system was quite successful. Thank you very much for watching. This is my Kralux, and uh, see you all in the next episode.